In this video, we're going to discuss some broad categories of data that you'll be analyzing as you work through this course. The broad categories of data we're going to talk about are cross-sectional data, time series data, pooled data, and longitudinal, also known as panel data. With cross-sectional data, the units of observation are individual people, firms, states, counties, countries, or some other group that's measured at a given point in time or a given interval of time. Examples of that would include any one of the U.S. censuses, such as the 2020 U.S. Census, where all the questions in that refer to a specific point in time. The Human Development Report is produced by the United Nations and contains data on the status of a variety of human development indicators in different countries. Any one year's data from that would represent a cross-section of data on the state of human development in these countries. Current population survey data is a monthly survey conducted by the U.S. Bureau of the Census, and that provides data on a random sample of individuals at that specific month. Time series data consists of units of observations that are measured at different time periods. So if we're measuring the units at different years or different quarters or different months or different days, then we're dealing with time series data. Examples of that might include any of the national income account data that's collected by the Department of Commerce. So data on GDP, consumption, investment spending, government spending, and so forth that's reported on an annual or quarterly basis would be a form of time series data because each observation would represent a different time period. Financial analysts will often work with time series on stock prices or other financial asset prices. Market research firms might look at sales data for a given company or a given industry and try to analyze the factors that are influencing that. That would be based on time series data. Quite often, data is going to be available on a series of cross-sections of some population, and in that case, we have something called pooled data. And with pooled data, the units of observations are individual people, firms, states, countries, or other grouping again. But now we're measuring that at different time periods. With pooled data, though, the individuals need not be the same people each time. Essentially, if you have a survey which is done periodically, and you group all that data together in one data set, that would be a form of pooled data. Examples of that would include opinion surveys, including political opinion surveys, which we see a lot of during election years. Or the general social survey has hundreds of questions that are administered every year to several thousand people. You can download any of that data, which will contain a mix of different individuals' responses and different years in which people responded. But again, the people who responded in 2015 are not necessarily the same people who responded in 2020. If, though, we want to follow individuals over time, then we need to use something called panel data. With panel data, some initial group of individuals is sampled in what's called a base year survey, and then they're resurveyed in subsequent time periods. Examples of that would include the National Longitudinal Surveys. In these surveys, there's an initial base year survey, and then the same group of people are followed initially every year and then later every other year. Examples of that include the National Longitudinal Surveys of Youth. The first of these began in 1979, and again, another cohort that began in 1997. Both of those are still ongoing surveys. And there's also many other studies that have been done where a group of individuals have been followed up over time. We'll be talking about several of those throughout this course. The panel study of income dynamics is another large sample where 5,000 households were initially surveyed several decades ago in a survey conducted by the Survey Research Center at the University of Michigan, and they've been followed up over time, including split-offs from those households as new generations have been formed and families have split apart for any number of reasons. The Penn World Tables consists of data on several hundred countries that have been measured over multiple time periods. So with the Penn World Tables, you can measure things like GDP. You can measure things like per capita income and inflation rates and other variables at different times 
in each of these countries. So those are the major types of data that we'll be working with at different times during the semester.